Thank you very much, Johnny. All right, Tony, let's talk about a number of outfield topics while I've got you here. Bryce Harper has been on a tear offensively, but defensively, uh, that might get overshadowed a little bit by his offensive numbers. What do you think about the way that he's kind of adjusted back to right field and the first two months that he's put up defensively? Well, um, it's been a joy to watch him, period, over the course of this first third of the season. Uh, he's He's been spectacular all the way around. Um, it's been a proud moment watching him make the adjustments he's made. Um, he's really grown and shown a lot of maturity this year, um, both with his decisions where to throw the ball, um, also moving on, you know, on his position. And before he has to even be told, um, he's just ahead of the game. It seems as though it's just things are just clicking a lot better for him out there. He's locked in on a consistent basis. I can see him communicating with his other outfielders. Um, I see him position, him position himself when a guy changes his swing how he makes the adjustments. Um, he's really confident with himself out there, and it shows overall. Let's move to left field. You've got a couple guys out there in Clint Robinson and Tyler Moore who uh, the outfield is not their natural spot, but both of them, it seems like, have made the adjustment pretty well out there. What's the process like for you in working with those two and getting them more uh, comfortable with working in the outfield, and how do you feel like they've done? Well, I mean, you know, part of the process is talking, um, just sitting on the bench and having conversations. Uh, pointing out certain situations in the game, whether we do something or the other team does something, whether it's good or it's bad, um, what the outfielder was possibly thinking about while the play was developing, um, talk, sometimes asking them questions on what they saw on certain swings when they come in, um, what did you feel like he was going to do. Um, and then there's also the process of just just good hard work, you know, just trying to get these guys out um, early enough so that they can get their consistent work in, um, touching on things that they may not have had to visit during the ball game, um, you know. You know, sometimes we'll go out and we'll work on, you know, throwing the ball to the plate when a runner's tagging on a fly ball, especially when they've gone a period of time where that hasn't happened. You know, you have to retouch it. Both of them have <clears throat> tackled the objective of becoming a good left fielder on their own without my help by the way they go about shagging during batting practice, by the way they go about their work. Michael Taylor is a guy who I know you spent a lot of time working with as well and kind of uh, getting through his maturation process uh, as a younger player. How have you seen him grow from the time that you initially started working with him until where he is now? Oh, well, I mean, <clears throat> I was part of the, the first meeting along with Doug Harris when we decided to uh, move him to the outfield. And uh, that was a tough meeting in himself because he's a determined player and he loves playing shortstops. Uh, but we, we saw it freeing up a lot of things with him, especially at the plate. Um, we knew he would be a good outfielder. But to our amazement, he did some exciting things just the first day we threw him out in center field. Um, I remember it was an instructional league, and we were playing the Braves. And I watched him the very first inning go from the right center gap to the left center gap and run a ball down that nobody thought was going to be caught. And then I watched him do it the, the very next inning from left center to right center. And, you know, we just, me and Doug kind of looked at each other. While he was in the stands, I was in the dugout. And we were like, wow, we might have stumbled on something there. Um, he's a very uh, determined kid. He is diligent about studying. Um, he's constantly listening, and he's constantly trying to challenge himself. And I think it shows up here at the big league level. Thanks for the time, Tony. Appreciate it. No problem. Johnny, send it back to you.